Good morning, everyone. Walk up here and give you a false alarm and everyone's quiet for the rest of the time this morning. But uh, we want to welcome you here. Uh, we have a few announcements. Today is the holiday dinner, so I hope you came hungry. Everything looks wonderful downstairs. Even if you didn't bring anything, you're thinking, I didn't bring anything. Just come down and eat. There'll be plenty of food. So I uh, hope everyone stays afterwards for that. Uh, also, tonight is the community youth service at 6 o'clock at the Red Bank Valley Community Center. Um, Catherine will be leading worship with uh, uh, Laura. Come on, there. Okay. So they'll be leading worship, and uh, it's a special guest speaker tonight, so you want to come for that. Uh, also, uh, we're looking for people who are willing to teach Sunday school. Uh, it'll be a two-year term. Uh, we have a couple of spots open. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, uh, please see me very soon because the new year is fast approaching and we need to uh, replace a couple of teachers by that time. Uh, also, fellowship team meeting is Monday, this Monday. It's moved up a week because of the holidays, 6.30 p.m. Board meeting will follow at 7. Uh, and Christmas Eve service is coming upon us. That's December uh, 24th at 7 p.m. Uh, we're also having a New Year's Eve party uh, at the Red Bank Valley Community Center again this year. Fun begins at 8, and we're going to snack for everybody to share. Uh, also, uh, today, uh, at one, from 1 to 4 and 6 to 8 will be Don Jeffers' uh, viewing hours. Uh, also, uh, we are doing some work at Leroy's bathroom today around 2 o'clock or so, uh, so if you can help out with that. I think we're actually going to get some stuff done today, hopefully. So, not that we didn't get stuff done before, but stuff that makes it actually look like a bathroom today. So, anybody else have any other announcements? I know Elizabeth Hook will be selling Christmas ornaments uh, after the service to help fund her uh, dance trip to Florida. Uh, so, you can see her. I think she's going to be downstairs or in this Sunday school room. Do you know which, where she's going to be? No, she'll be around. So, in this Sunday school room. So, the scripture for this morning is found in Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 2. It says this, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have, shat you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the, road, the rod of their oppressors. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be in your house. And Lord, we see all of these decorations and all of the uh, advertisements and, and, and all of the, uh, the TV shows that are reminding us that we are in the Christmas season. But Father, may you remind us that it's all about you. As we come to you today, speak to us through your word. Strengthen us with your presence. Hear our worship. Father God, send your Holy Spirit to be with us today. It's in Jesus, your son's precious name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Take a look at this video.
Let's go ahead and stand and worship.
Christmas. Let's greet one another this morning. Let me give some of you guys a Merry Christmas. It is the season.
let's stand and worship together.
That's good, amen. Sing that chorus one more time. Joy, unspeakable joy, in all the glowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, rises in my soul. Don Jeffers family uh, today is the and the funeral was tomorrow. Um, are there any others? Yes, Larry. The Larry Shirey family and Larry Shoemaker. Larry Shirey and Larry Shoemaker. Yes. Yes, Chris. to you in, in prayer and in any season, at any time, under any circumstance. Father, we thank you for uh, this uh, turkey trot uh, and the money that it raised uh, to help uh, with Lacey Magnani. Lord, we thank you for the record turnout and, and Lord, also for this other fundraiser. Father, we pray that it was uh, uh, successful as well and, and just give you the glory for it as uh, they seek to, to help someone in the community in need. Father God, and Lord, we just think of, uh, of of all of those needing a touch from you, Father. We think of uh, baby Cora and Randy and Brenda, and Father, we just uh, ask that you would give the doctors wisdom. We ask you to give uh, the parents a, a, just a, a peace and just uplift them and hold them in your loving arms. And Lord, we know that this is uh, a tough time and a, and a tiring time for them, but Father God, we pray that many blessings would come out of this. Uh, and Lord, that the baby would uh, be able to come ho come home in what would seem like no time. Lord, we also just think of the, uh, the, these families that have lost loved ones this week. Lord, we think of the Don Jeffers family. And, 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 and Lord, we just ask that you would strengthen them as they go through the, the viewing and, and the, the time of uh, uh, the funeral tomorrow. Lord, we also think of the Larry Shirey family and, and the Larry Shoemaker family. Lord, uh, uh, so many that have lost loved ones this week, and, and Lord, we just ask that you would wrap them up in your loving arms and, and just comfort them uh, in their time of loss. And Father, Lord, we think of uh, Leroy, uh, who's going to be having surgery soon, and Lord, uh, we, we just ask that you would uh, put your hand of, of protection 
upon him, Lord, that you would guide the, the surgeon as he uh, uh, goes through this procedure. And, and Father, we're already going to praise you for the good report that comes after. Lord, we also uh, think of Faith's mom as they're going to be uh, transporting her back to Hawaii very shortly. And, and Lord, uh, we just ask for safe travels, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for no complications. Uh, as, as she travels back. And, and Lord, uh, for this unspoken request that was lifted up, and Lord, I know there are probably many more unspokens that could have been uh, voiced this morning. Lord, we just ask that you would be with each one of them, uh, just being there to, to meet the need. Uh, and, and, and Lord, uh, let each one know that you have uh, all of these situations under your control. And Father God, we just praise you for the joy that we spoke, that we sung about, that joy, unspeakable joy. Lord, we pray that you would send us that in abundance this morning and throughout this Christmas season. Father, we pray now specifically for the service today. Lord, would you speak through your word? Lead and guide and direct us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, this time we're going to dismiss the children to Children's Church. service over again. Didn't our youth do a fantastic job leading us in worship last week? Um, I, I'm so proud of them, and I have to admit there are a few parts about it that stuck out, and uh, and it always their their skits that they do always seem to have you know hit home and and always seem to be very effective, and and uh, they gave us a little bit of joy to help kick off the Christmas season, and 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 the scripture that that we shared last week that we're kind of basing our, our ministry off that Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. It just keeps rolling over in my mind, and I've been meditating on, on the meat of that most of the week. And, and the thing that sticks out most in my mind is that song that they sang. And I don't know what it is, but and I hadn't heard it before, uh, before they sang it, but it's been on repeat in my head. And it's a fix my eye, eye, eye. Anyone else have that in their head this week? Now it will be, yes. <laughs> On you, boo-boo. I'm just thankful I'm able to sing this morning. You know, in the last three weeks, I couldn't sing. Every time I opened my mouth, nothing would come out. I don't know if it was the weirdest thing. But uh, so three weeks down, we're, we're good to go. Not really, but uh, you're going to hear me sing a lot because I haven't been able to. Um, but uh, that, that song and the message of that song have just kind of stayed with me. And, and, and it's not necessarily a bad thing when you have a good song stuck in your head. Now, it'll get old once, you know, in a couple of weeks, but it still remains there. But to, as I think about the message of the song, I can't think of a, a, of a better song to have stuck in your head than, than when you go into Advent season with. As, as we enter the, the Advent season, to, to keep reminding ourselves to fix our eyes on Jesus. That was the message of the video this morning. To, to, to stay focused on Him. And, and to see more of Him in all that we do. And over the next few weeks as we, as we draw closer to Christmas, we're going to continue on in our book of Acts. But I, I, I want to take a look at the next few accounts that are given in the book of Acts through the lens of another scripture. And that scripture is one of the greatest proclamations that, that anyone has ever made about themselves. And it's found in John 14, 6. You probably know it. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this has been a favorite uh, a scripture of mine, and, and I know that uh, meeting with the family, Don Jeffers had a, a, a very fond memory of this, this scripture, and, and I'll be sharing it tomorrow in his, in his funeral service. But it, it's just one of those things that, that, that just keeps at you and, 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 and keeps, keeps pulling you in. And, and as I look at that scripture, it applies so well to our next three passages in Acts. 
And it applies so well to us being in the Christmas season. And it, it applies so much to the message that the, the youth gave last week. It's almost like it's perfect. It's almost like God is orchestrating this and bringing it all together for us in this time. You see, in these next three passages involving the life of Saul and Peter, they are the perfect example of Jesus proving who he said he was. That he was the way, the truth, and the life. Let's take a look at the account of the conversion of Saul so we can determine how Jesus is the way. And if you have your Bible, turn with me to Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19, where you can follow along on the screen. It says this, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed all around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are now persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from uh, Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. You see, up until this point in his life, Saul has chosen his own path and his own way and, and had in his own mind what doing the right thing was all about. Until this one day when he encountered a person named Jesus who claimed to be the one true way on the road to Damascus and it changed everything about his life and everything about the direction he was going and it allowed him to see the true way for the first time. Before we look any closer to someone and how we can apply it to our lives, let's ask the Lord to bless our time and open His Word through His Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I pray now for Your wisdom that Your words would 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 fall on furrow ground. <clears throat> Lord, soften our hearts. Teach us. Lord, show us what it means to know you as the way. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Now, most of you probably already know this about me, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan of music, and uh, I'm a music trivia nerd of sorts. Anyone else like that? One person. Thank you, Tracy. 80s music. Okay, a few of you. Uh, and, and you give me two seconds of a song, and I can tell you 
what it is, who sang it, and, and probably within a year or two what year it came out. Even stuff before my time. And I don't know why God gave me that gift, but I just enjoy music. And, 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 and because of this, I had other songs uh, floating around in my head. Anyone ever get songs stuck in their head? This has been a bad week for me. And, and, and as, I, as I began to, to think about the way and Jesus claiming to be the way, songs talking about the way, and, and they kept going through my mind, and there's a lot of them. 1969, how many of you remember that? Okay, that was before my time, but you probably know the song. Frank Sinatra found his theme song by proclaiming that he did it my way. And it became such a huge hit that it's now the most covered song by any, by any artist ever written. That means more, more artists have sang this song than any other song. And, and it became his most famous and signature song. In 1975, and we're getting closer to anybody's era here. Okay, I see a couple more hands coming up. We had a couple of other artists who thought that it had things all figured out. A little-known obscure group at the time named Aerosmith decided that you should walk this way. And I was going to do the screen, but it's not going to happen today. <laughs> While Peter Frampton thought that he had found the right path in a woman and sang, Ooh, baby, I love your way. I may remember that. 1977, which is the year I was born, just to make you feel old. If that's your, your genre and your, your time period... Fleetwood Mac made the promise to all of us that you could go your own way. Do you remember that one? Or how about in 1986, Run DMC was so fascinated by Aerosmith that they teamed up with them and released, re-released Walk This Way. And the, and the song became much larger and much more famous. 1993. Where are my 1993 people at? It's okay to admit it. Lenny Kravitz tried to bring others with, with them by asking, are you going to go my way? Or in 1998, we had Usher asking us to follow him in an all different version of my way, and we had Fastball singing about the way that they had just discovered. So isn't it interesting that all these singers seem to have found their own way? They seem to have advice for which, way, which path you should go down. And by the way, I don't include any, any songs after the year 2000 because that's when they stopped making good music for all of you that were asking. <laughs> but all of these people, they seem to, they, they've got it all figured out. I know the way and you should follow me and, and this is the way that you should go. And this, of course, is nothing new. We all think we're on the right path. How many of you think you're on the right path? We all think that we have things figured out and, and we have a good grasp on things and we know which direction that we should go. And apparently this has been around for a while because this is exactly what Saul had done. He knew the way. He had chosen his own path that he thought was right and correct and he brutally followed it. Here's what the scripture says. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. And so here is Saul. And I want you to hear this. Saul was a very smart man. And by smart, I mean he studied at the best schools. He studied under the, very, the best teachers, and he went to school longer than the average person did. Also, Saul was a very religious person, and he tried to keep the law as best as he could, and, and he was in church more than the, the average person would have been. So Paul is very religious. Paul is very well educated. If anyone would have had any chance of finding the way, it would have been Saul. He could have relied on his intelligence. But his intelligence could not produce a meaningful path in life. He could have relied on his religion and his devotion. But in the end, that produced only a path of killing. Here's a clue for you. If Saul and all of his intelligence 
and all of his religious uh, training and, and, and devotion could not find and could not formulate the right path, then we can't do it either. Throughout the day, we plan so many things and, and we experience so many things and, 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 and in our planning and, and in our minds, we think that, that we're choosing the right path. Daily, we choose what path to go down, but how many of us stop and consult the Lord to make sure it's the path that He wants us to go down? When, when we leave all of our walking and our planning and our doing to our own selves, our own minds, our own experiencing experiences, we are walking down a dangerous path. I'm not saying it will lead you to the place where you're stoning people in the streets. Probably won't, won't pick that path. Maybe some of you will, but I don't know you. But it leads us to some place that's dangerous. And if we're listening to the voices that are on the radio telling you to go this way or that, or on the television telling you to do this or do that, or, or, you're, or you're just listening to the internet to tell you which way you should go, it will always lead you into a dangerous place. We need a clear encounter with the only one who knows the way. Because he is, by definition, the way. Knowing the direction that we should go. You see, Saul had an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus that changed his whole mind and his whole being. And it changed the way that he was walking. You see, Saul was dead set on killing Christians and rounding up as many as he could. In fact, he was so zealous about this that he was willing to travel outside of the Holy Land to do it. He was on his way to Syria. Syria is still not a nice place. And, and perhaps he had rounded up as many as he could in Jerusalem, and so he was expanding his territory. He was taking no mercy. Even the women he was bringing in, rounding up, and, 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 and punishing but Saul did not, was not able to complete the plan that he thought was best because something happened. The way happened on the way to Damascus. Take a look back at our scripture. It says, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. And Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So we've already talked about how Saul was, was very religious, very educated. We knew that he had great zeal. But he was also a very proud man. And, and you, some scholars think that Saul had a little bit of an inferiority complex. Despite all of his schooling, despite all of his, his religious training, do you know why that was? Saul was a very, very short man. According to some scholars and, and some translation, Saul stood just four feet and a half. Little guy. Now you can get the picture and, and just see him. And, and he's going around carrying out these threats. And, and his pride is building up with him and becoming legendary. But the pride and the path that he was on came to a screeching halt. He saw a flashing light and he heard a voice. Now, if what comes to your mind is, okay, he saw a flashing light. So he saw something like a strobe light. And he heard a voice. So if you can think of Morgan Freeman as the voice of God, you know, that's the, always the voice that I think of. We're, we're not even close. Because this proud man, this man who was, was, was so prideful, suddenly falls down to his knees. Saul would have never done this on his own. Saul bowed to no man. But the, whatever he saw and whatever he heard forced him to his knees. The voice must have been booming beyond what any, any one of us can comprehend. Because this proud man who was going around killing Christians cries out. He says, who are you, Lord? 
The word that he used for Lord here is the word Kyrie. We translate it as Lord, but it means so much more than that. And exclaiming the word Kyrie, Saul was saying that this voice was so impressive that whoever spoke it was now his master. An instant change in Saul, being this prideful man walking down the street one moment to hearing this voice and seeing this light and saying, whoever you are, I am now your servant. He was saying that this person who spoke and appeared before him could have complete control. He was giving up his absolute ownership over his entire being to this one who's now spoke to him because he was so impressive. This Kyrie was a title of extreme honor. It wouldn't be given out flippantly or without thought. Saul was so impressed by what he saw, he says, I'm giving up my path. Whoever you are, I'm going to follow you. So who are you, Lord? He didn't even know who was speaking the words, but he was so impressed by who spoke them that he said, I will follow you. You are my master. I am your servant. You can choose whatever path you would like. And the voice answered, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. We have a name for the one who is so magnificent that this prideful man of Saul gave up all of his rights. This was Saul's pivot point. When he saw Jesus on the road to Damascus and realized how great he truly was, he became a changed man. Do you have a turning point? Most people refer to that as, as, a, as a testimony where God came in and changed you. I think as, a, as I met with the family of Don Jeffers, you know, those who have knew, known him for a long time, they described a man that I didn't know as a gruff man, as a strong man who went around maybe picking fights. As an impatient man? I didn't know that guy. Do you know what happened? Some of you were here. In the early 90s, he got saved and baptized, or in the late 90s maybe it was, he was saved and baptized and became a different person. See, I knew a Don Jeffers that was kind and, and caring and compassionate and had a servant's heart and was always saying nice things and smiling at people. What happened? There was a change. It was a pivot point where he, he met Jesus Christ. And it changed everything about him. We need a Jesus experience so that we can know the way in which we are to go. What is your life-altering experience? Saul has this moment with Jesus. He decides he's going to follow him and go the way. But Saul was still blind, still hungry, still thirsty. And so along came Ananias. And, and Paul had seen him in a vision. And here's what the scriptures say happened. It says, but the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, whom appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. You see, Paul had something on his eyes that was preventing him from seeing. And we all have that when we are born into a sinful nature. We're not able to see. We need someone to remove those scales from our eyes. Paul couldn't rely on his intellect. He couldn't rely on his religious upbringing. He could only rely on the one that he knew and had just met. He had seen the vision of a man named Ananias come and help him see again. 
For years, Paul had persecuted the Christians, but they weren't even called Christians yet. They were simply known as what? People who followed Christ were known as followers of the way. Jesus had claimed to be the way. The Jews had rejected him as the way. They said, no, the Torah, that's the way that we should all go. The, the Torah, the, the Old Testament, especially the first five books, of, they wanted to live by Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. How many of you know that's not a good idea? But that was their way. That was what they claimed was, was God's self-revelation to man in their eyes. But the Torah never claimed to be the way. Only Jesus does that. And so his followers were called the way because they followed him who was the embodiment and flesh of the self-revelation of God. And so he became the way that we should go in the process. See, Saul's story is one in which we need to heed the lessons. We need to stop making our own paths. And stop thinking that we can figure this thing out because we're not the way. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you're not the way. Only Jesus claimed to be that. Only he could, could fulfill that. Only he was, 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 was humble enough and, and yet confident enough in himself to say, I am the way. Saul found out that that was true as he, as he stood there and, 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 and stared upon this vision. He couldn't think of anything else. Everything he had done to this point, he didn't want to do anymore. He knew he had found the one who was the way. You see, Jesus claimed he was the way in the book of John, and he proved that he was the way in the book of Acts. So we need to see him in all of his glory and have that moment of change, a pivot point where we cry out to him and say, Master, take all of me. Where we give him all authority and give him all control. And we allow him to open our eyes so that we can see the path that he has laid out before us. Do you know Jesus as the way, not just a way, not just one of the ways, but as the way, the one and only way of salvation. Would you pray with me? Lord, we praise you. Because we know that you are the way. Lord, you, you said that it was to be. You claimed that it, it was through your son. And you proved that it was that way. In the book of Acts, in the life of Saul. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is the way. The one and only way to salvation. Lord, I pray that we would make that a reality in our lives. Lord, that we would stop trying to choose our own paths and, and, and make plans on our own in our own power and in our own intellect. And Lord, just fall back into your arms to have that experience with your son that we would cry out, Master, and we would give you all authority and all control to set the way. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that as we follow you, that you would open our eyes, that you would remove the scales that, that, that sin has, has put on us, and that we would be able to have eyes that see and ears that hear. We would be able to determine the path that is set before us by you. Lord, I pray that we would make Jesus the way in our lives and surrender completely to his control. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go and stand. Thank you that we
we serve a God who is big enough to proclaim that he is the way. And Lord, to back that talk up with action. Father, we proclaim that Jesus Christ is the way. Lord, help us to walk in his footsteps down your path for our lives. And Lord, may we be reminded this Christmas season that Jesus is the way. Conversations and Lord, may we come to the realizations that, that when we follow you, we're more than just Christians. We are followers of the way. We thank you and praise you, and it's in Jesus' name that we ask all these things. Amen. We're staying for the dinner, and I encourage you all to do that. I can go down the stairs through this room. Uh, also, Elizabeth went in and be in there selling Christmas ornaments. We hope that you have a wonderful day and you find the way.